Well, that's the Blissworth Tunnel out of the way. We weren't looking forward to that. Um, but that weren't as bad as I thought that was going to be. Nice and straight. Nobody coming the other way. Hello, everybody. Um, this is our vlog of our journey through the Blissworth Tunnel. Um, then on to Stoke Bruin and then on to Campbell Park. And we're actually drinking oh, yeah, we're tea actually instead drink, of gin. We're actually we're, drinking yeah, tea. Yeah, because we're filming this during the day. We normally do these um, in the evening time. So yeah. thought that would be wrong to have the gin on the go, although it is gin o'clock somewhere in the world right yes. now. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so we left uh, Norton Junction, went through um, Blissworth Tunnel. Yeah. And, uh, Which is one of the longest tunnels, apparently, in Europe. Yeah, yeah 2,812 metres long. Yes, the, the longest navigable tunnel in Europe. And that was completed in 1805. So yes. Quite and, old. Yes, and I did the math. And if I'd have known it was 214 years old, I might have actually got out at the beginning and, um, and walked... The tunnel. I yeah, didn't realise yeah. it was that old. Yeah, I, I, I don't enjoy the tunnels, and Dev enjoys them even less. She, yeah. uh, mind so you, the reason I enjoy him less is because I come inside and do the ironing. Yeah, that's Deb's ironing time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just, just cra crazy. I think it was built all those those yeah. years ago, yeah. and uh, it sort of fell into disrepair, uh, become unnavigable, and then in the 1980s, I believe. Uh, there was a big restoration prog project on it and a uh, large section of the tunnel it was uh, relined with um, precast concrete rings and it was an actual a test model for what they was going to do on the channel tunnel yeah so a little bit of trivia so for you full of <laughs> i googled things. it about 10 minutes ago so it's not like i'm i'm full of knowledge <laughs> and we're now at stoke Brown. Now going through the top lock. Gonna moor up here for a few days. And we've got some friends coming to visit us, bringing their motor home down, staying on a lo little local campsite. There's two pubs here, so we should be able to find a right nice pint. No stopping Deb now, she's a uh, chief lock volunteer. A couple there just help us through the lock, so I think Deb's going to stay there and do the same. Drizzly day has turned out into a blinding day. It's cold though. Can't feel my fingers. Well, that's this flight of locks done. Um, we should get moorings just beyond this lock, hopefully.
Stoke Brewing. Um, a lovely, lovely little place. Um, full of full of history, which I'm, yeah. I'm not going to go yeah. too much in because we're, we're going to turn around in a little while, come back up and come back to Stoke Brewing. So I'll talk a yeah. little bit more about that in, yeah. in another vlog. But um, a nice little place. So we moored up and uh, a couple of our besties, Phil and Shell, come to see us. Yeah, on a... The, one of the, there's two pubs in Stoke Brew and one of them the navigation there's a field right next to the pub and they've got their own little uh, campsite yeah. so they brought their motor home um, which was quite convenient so we was all in close proximity to the pub yes spent a couple of nights in the pub um, got a bit squiffy Phil actually got me on to sherry um, so it's his fault that I now drink sherry like an old lady um, but yeah, that was a lovely couple of days catching up. Um, and just before uh, Phil and Michelle left, we went up to get some water. So we had to go up two locks um, and Michelle wanted to do the locks just to see what it was like yeah, so and they how they have, worked. Have the experience of seeing yeah. how they worked and actual, you know, physically doing physically them. Physically doing yeah. them. And she, um, she was on my side and said that they can be a little bit hard work yeah especially the uh, the lock up near the uh, museum yeah yeah the gates yeah, very are very hard very heavy on that one yeah. Water, come back and moored again and our daughter Katie and her boyfriend Stephen um, come to see us which was great they come and bought a load of stuff yeah all, all the stuff we've been oh. uh, yeah ordering off of Amazon had, having it delivered back to uh, Kings a postal address we've got in Kings Lynn uh, they filled their car up and brought it all, all yeah. to us yeah so, but that was lovely to see her what are you so excited for I'm now going to see my Katie for another what another couple of days I think didn't yeah. we and then we moved off to go to Campbell, Campbell Park Campbell Park yeah, yeah. I was going to say Gifford Park yeah yeah Campbell stopped Park. at uh, stopped at Cosgrove on, yeah, the way. on the way another yeah. nice um, little town yeah, now coming into Cosgrove bridge 65 uh, very strange looking canal bridge Saw our friend um, Nikki yeah, and yeah, her had husband more, Glenn. More, more visitors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that was, was nice. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. Went out, sort of back to their house and had um, a Chinese takeaway. It yeah. was lush. <laughs> yeah. So. Not yeah. the not the food on the boat isn't lush. No, no, no but it no. is nice to not cook and have something that's really bad for you sometimes. Yeah. When we left Cosgrove, uh, we had our first little. Aqueduct. I thought he was going to say we had our first little accident. <laughs> and when we left Cosgrove, um, we had our first aqueduct, um, just a small one going over the River Ouse. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, sort of views were were good as well. Um, You've got in your tea. 
Right, I've just walked down from our moorings at uh, Cosgrove, where, where we are, up near Lock 21, uh, just to have a look at the, the little aqueduct we'll be coming over. Um, it's only, you know, I don't know, about 80 feet long, and apparently, let's have a look. Yeah, it's the oldest broad canal iron trough aqueduct. A little bit of history there, so uh, if we walk back, I'll show you the aqueduct. Yeah, it crosses the ooze. It's probably 50, 60 feet above the ooze. Just checking, I've got both dogs. There we go, we're now on it. There's the ooze going underneath. And there's the little aqueduct. And then we left Cosgrove, and I always like to leave something <laughs> when I, I leave a mooring, and uh, just happened to be my GoPro again. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Second GoPro. Yeah, so that's two in a month. So three, and he's out. He don't get any more. He's got another yeah. one, and that is it. He doesn't get any more, and he's really took a lot more care over this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't use this one. <laughs> <laughs> We're now about to leave Cosgrove, just getting everything set up, all my cameras set up. I've gone round to the front to put my GoPro on and uh, plop in the water. So that's my second GoPro in four weeks. Right, carry on. officially going over our first aqueduct which is I think it's about the same length as the boat but hey ho yeah, and I think it, the, the river it crosses we're probably a hundred feet up I'll double check later but the river it crosses is the River Great Ooze and you can see Debbie got me some nice video footage at the front and we're now going to chug on to, I forgot where we're going to now, um, just outside Milton Keynes, there's a Tesco's and an Asda just to stock up and we're then going to, I think, Gifford Park, yeah we're going to try and moor up and spend the night there and then move on to Campbell Park which will put us in easy walking distance with the main town centre. So now if I'm not mistaken, Tempest Fugit means something along the lines of time flies. Um, I shan't say how I know that. <laughs> Definitely didn't do Latin at school. So on our way to um, Campbell Park, we went through a place called Wolverton and it had a Tesco's literally by the canal. So we moored up and, and did a, a bit of a shop. Good old stock up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stock the shelves, um, which was good. Um, well, we just moored up in Wolverton and we're gonna go that away. There's a Tesco's and an uh, Asda just down there. Not sure whether there's any moorings available up there. We've moored up here behind some boats and that's about five minute walk down there so uh, uh, I'll see you all when I get there. And had I known these mooring rings were here and all this was free this is where we would have moored up to then trundle up over those steps 
and just the other side of that building there and across a road is an Asda, Tesco's, McDonald's and that's where we went and stocked up with everything. Very nice apartments here. So when I come back through next time round at least I've now uh, oh, Let's point the pointy end in the right direction rather than worry about what on video. Yeah, so that was where we'll moor on the way back uh, to restock. And we're going to just let me check my book. Where are we going? Um, I don't know. Now I should be able to tell you where we're going. Got me Nicholson's guide, got me glasses on so I can actually see what I'm reading. We're off to Stoughtonbury Park. Stoughtonbury, Stoughtonbury. I'm um, gonna stay there for the night and then we're gonna head on to Great Linford where there's uh, water and LSAN facilities there. And then we'll be heading down to uh, Campbell Park. And once we get to Campbell Park, we'll be very near um, where all the main shopping centre is in Milton Keynes. It's been a couple of years since I've been there. Debbie's at the front in the well deck, getting some wonderful video footage, hopefully, because as I mentioned earlier, my second GoPro uh, fell in the water this morning, and uh, no way of retrieving it. Uh, I've got a bracket on the front, which is all now tethered with a little safety link. Uh, but as I went to attach it to that, one of the nuts fell off. So as I bent down to pick the nut, put my GoPro just on top of the cratch cover and the wind just took it, slid and plop. Unfortunately, Deb wasn't videoing at the time, otherwise you'd have, you'd have seen the expression on my face. But hey-ho, life goes on. Um, when I say GoPro, it wasn't an expensive GoPro. It's a uh, one of Amazon choice ones. I'll actually, I'll, I'll do a, a link to it below uh, to tell you what one it is. I think they're only about 30, 34 pounds, but with the memory card and bits and pieces, sort of 45 pounds and that's that's two in a month now so <laughs> i think i'm gonna put down amazon vouchers as my uh, christmas list because i think this is going to be a regular occurrence nice mural along the mural mural I'm never quite sure how that one's pronounced um whatever way it's pronounced rather nice along the wall Looks like I'm now going to go over my second aqueduct of the day. It's all very strange going along at four mile an hour when everybody else is going along at 60, 70 mile an hour. Give me four mile an hour any day. Had enough of that in my time. And the uh, the rain has just caught me up. <laughs> and uh, whether she heard me, I don't know. But she just shouted, "Did I want my coat?" So she's now going to bring me my coat. And as if by magic, I have my raincoat. Is it morning or is it afternoon? Oh, just just afternoon. Yeah. Hiya. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, unless you actually uh, regularly check your watch, you end up saying good morning to everybody all day long. Uh, I just said good morning at that chat. Check me watch, and it was one minute past twelve. So he bid me good afternoon.
after this breach, but it looks like a load of fishermen have beaten me to it. And I'm sure if I try and moor where they are, I'll be as, bad, as popular as a fart in a lift. did eventually get moored right up there and we're now going into Milton Keynes for a bit of retail therapy. Yeah so that's it for this vlog um, and I hope you liked it. If you did hit the like button and uh, subscribe. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye.